Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey everybody and welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 83 and today it's Aaron Zavala. Aaron Zavala is going to join us today from, he's back off of, uh, he's back off of being hurt. Yep. Uh, just got back with the Frisco Rough Riders. We're going to go talk to him and then we're going to go down in the bus leagues. That's fine. We'll do that in a little bit. But first we've got to talk about the big league team. Still the first place Texas <laughs> Rangers. Yeah. But I mean, we, we've talked about this every week, and we've got to keep talking about it. There's one glaring need on this team, and it's being able to find someone Bruce Bochy can trust in a leverage situation. This bullpen is really – and yeah. you know what? It's around the league, though. Well, um, it's, it's a, it, it, it is um, – it, it's interesting. You know, I, I – um, they, they just – you know, I, I, I think – I'm stumbling over my words, but Wednesday night's loss is kind of a pit, you know, tells you how desperate the Rangers are for somebody to get the game to the ninth inning. They went with Josh Spores. And I know in our previous episode, we talked about, hey, Josh Spores is doing better. Uh, and I don't want to say, oh, well, he's still Josh Spores, but he's still, he's still not a proven quantity. No. And he's definitely not a guy who you want to face Ronald Acuna, Matt Olson. Ozzy Albies and Austin Riley with a two-run lead. Um, you know, he 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 walked Acuna. Hard hard to blame him considering how good he'd been, but it was really a non-competitive uh, uh, walk. Um, and he, he got Olsen, but then, you know, the, the next two hits were on 0-2 pitches, which is just, you just can't do it. I mean, he put himself in a position to wipe these guys out. And then he threw two balls down the middle, and they went for, went for game tie and, you know, the RBI hit and the game tie and hit. You know, it, it it it's that that just speaks volumes. It's supposed to be Jonathan Hernandez or Jose Leclerc, or or it was supposed to be Will Smith, and right. and, and Leclerc was supposed to be closing games in the ninth, but instead it was Josh Spores, and that's that's a that tells you where things are with with the bullpen. Um, you can't trust Jonathan Hernandez right now. It looks like Leclerc is pitching better, but but. He's at still what, not your. At what point do you throw him into the ninth inning or the eighth inning? Sorry, and then Brock Burke comes in, gets gets out of the eighth, does a nice job, and then gives up a homer in the in the ninth. And um, you know his last time out that I recall was was the Friday night in Oakland where they they blew a two run lead in the tenth. So there there are some issues, uh, obviously. Um, who do you trust? I mean, you got Will it. Smith is well, maybe I, the most trustworthy. I, I, but, tell you, I tell you who you trust. You trust. Nathan Avaldi to, to go get, to, to, get, to get you another inning, yeah. Or and and this is something that's going to happen down the road. I think at least until the trade deadline, I think you're going to see Dane Dunning pitching a lot of one inning stints. I really do. I mean, I I, I think that uh, or or or, or he pitches the seventh and the eighth to get to the ninth. You know, it 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 seems like when Degrom is back, you're going to have to figure out what to do with with Dane Dunning. You're you're probably not going to put one of the five guys that's in the rotation or the other three guys, you're not going to put Martin Perez or John Gray or uh, Andrew Heaney into the bullpen. So you, you, you try to maximize Dane Dunning's value. And and right now, if he could pitch you from the sixth to the ninth or, for, you know, for, from the the seventh and eighth and get you to the ninth, that might be their best bet right now. And, and the know, problem is he can't do that back to back to back to back times. That's and, true. And, that's and true. So it, it's, it's, now there's games when they're ahead four or five runs. It's easier. You go yeah. to some of the other guys and yeah. you try to work your way through it. But when it's a one run game, maybe you're right. Maybe it is Dane. That's the guy that it, it, it might at. be. And, um, you know, again, you know, trades are in this team's future. Uh, the, the bad news is the trade deadlines not until what August 1st this year. Maybe it's August second. It's not the thirty first like it normally is, but it doesn't matter. There's two and a half months until you get to the trade deadline, and there just generally aren't trades that are pulled off this time of year. So you know whether it's a pricing or whether teams are you know a lot of teams are 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 kind of working on the draft, getting ready for that. Uh, so their attention really isn't on trades, but the Rangers really need help in the bullpen, and Bruce Bochy said as much Wednesday night. 
Right. You, well, you know, and, and you also have uh, right now until you get to the deadline, maybe what they are is they're going to be sitting there watching waiver wires when other teams start giving up on people and you you, you claim somebody or pick because they've got people they could waive. I mean, I don't yeah, know what yeah. to do right well, I now. Mean, I mean, I, honestly, I mean, you know, I'm, this was uh, in, in Friday, Friday on the farm this week. Um, you, you, you OK, so you look in the minor leagues, you look internally. All right. Well, what do you have internally? You have Chase Lee, you've Chase got Lee, who doesn't throw hard. You have Grant Anderson, who's really hard on right-handers, who's an interesting guy. Do you do you consider at some point, and may, maybe not now, but maybe later in the year, do you consider um, Owen White and Jack Leiter for yes? You know, break them break them into the major leagues that way. It's been done before. You know, Derek Holland came into major leagues well, that way well, before he became I mean, a good starter. You know, the Atlanta Braves did that in the early '90s and mid '90s with with some of their guys who became uh, you know starters behind Maddox, Clavin, and Smoltz. Um, do you do something like that? And yes. I, know, I know people people have said, well, "What about Jacob Degrom?" No, 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 no. Jacob Degrom is is a starting pitcher. He's making thirty seven million dollars. You don't want to you don't want a thirty seven million dollar closer. You want to maximize Jacob Degrom? Like, oh, he gets hurt all the time. Why can't he just pitch one inning? It's not no. just one inning. No, it's one inning up to three days in a row. Right, and you you think that that's how guys get hurt when you, they've been stretched out the way they you, have. But you, but you, you know, he's fragile. He, he he seems fragile now. Right, completely changing everything where he's throwing every day and and throwing a hundred miles per hour every day, even if it's just for fifteen pitches. If he's doing that four or five times a week, that's pretty hard on a guy. Absolutely, and and, and then that's a whole mindset thing. You have to change your entire routine yep it's just not you got to be able to get up get ready quick it's just not gonna happen no it's not and, and why and, would it happen right. at that much so per, per year? We're, we're just we're just throwing that out that's that's not a possibility the one line i see at the end of the tunnel, tunnel on this and and i mean this honestly obviously tread deadline they will make a move they will go out and get somebody they will make a move i've thought to myself why not now why not go out and try to they can try they can try to cut a deal somewhere yeah. and maybe set the market uh because it's been that bad but you look around baseball there's been a lot of blown saves this year uh there's been a lot of teams that have done it i went and did some splits i wrote a little thing i was just having some fun last night looking at things and and i looked up teams and and a lot of them uh, you know save opportunities you're looking at how many there are and there's a lot of them where that number you know a good it's good when you see save opportunity 15 saves 14 stuff like that yeah. but when you're seeing save opportunities 15 saves nine there's a lot of that in there so there's yeah. there, there have been some blown saves the rangers have a lot and in that situation, they're down at the lower of the end of it, and that's obviously there. Yeah. You've got the kids in the minor leagues, like you're saying, but you, when you get to a playoff situation, you've got guys that probably are starters that aren't going to start in a playoff situation because they usually only go three deep, yeah. maybe four deep. That you, soon you start looking at Haney at the back end, or maybe someone like a, a, a John Gray who isn't going to start if, if it's a short series. Those guys could come in and do some things too. It's not their normal routine. Yeah. Um, and in doing that, but there's a lot of things where the bullpen can help. And you know that everybody's available in the playoffs. Right. I mean, right. Corey Seeger, I mean, Corey Seeger, not Corey, Jacob DeGrom on his side day where he's supposed to throw a side day, if they're in the playoffs, he might be a guy that they get up and go, hey, why don't you give me one inning because it's do or die. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? To get us out of this or do whatever. But that's a whole different thing. You got to get there. This team is playing well enough to get there. This is a legit contender for the playoffs. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. They've got the offense to do it, but my Lord, they've got a hold. Yeah. Well, you got to make the postseason first. Absolutely. And, and, the Rangers can't keep and the Astros are starting losing, to creep. can't keep losing games in this fashion multiple time, multiple times a week or exactly. once every series, which is kind of what it's been because the Angels they lost the one game, uh, the Mariners thumped them five nothing uh, in, in in the one game in Seattle, uh, then you had the 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 loss in Oakland was a bullpen loss, you had uh, the Braves come and, and whip some butt in the first game, but then the, the last game was on the bullpen. <clears throat> Excuse me. They should have won that series. <clears throat> and if you want to go back before the before the the, the road trip, you know the, the Arizona game, the second Arizona game was a bullpen thing. So, um, and then the Yankees was not. But then then you're at Cincinnati, and all three of those games were were on the bullpen. So right. if if you look at their last, let's say, ten losses, how many of those can you pin on the bullpen? Exactly. Well, I think you can probably pin seven of them. Absolutely. And so that's an issue. And I know, and I said last week, relievers aren't going to be perfect every time, 
they're human. They they have just days and aren't their days. It's, but the Rangers have too many of those guys right now, and it's costing them ball games. Exactly, and it's compounding. Because here's the deal: it's compounding on these guys because they know they're the ones that are blowing this right now. Well, that puts added pressure on you. You get put in the leverage situation again, and I I, I don't care who you are. Part of you goes out there going. I got to keep this together. I know we can't do this again. This bullpen. I need to help do this and do that. And it's in the back of your mind when yeah. you've already helped blow seven bullpen games or whatever it's been over the last week or so. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it's the glaring need this team has for right now. What everyone needs to have is if we need to have seven or eight run leads going into the back <laughs> end of the deal. And and honestly, that's that's what has to happen that you feel more comfortable doing it. Well, and it, uh, and so, something else you might consider, you know. I, you know the Braves, the Braves smash left-hander, so maybe they're a bad example. But if your best reliever is your closer, and you got to get the game to the ninth inning, I mean, why? You know, if if you had the faith in Will Smith to get those three guys out, Acuna, Olson, Ozzy Albies, you got to use them there, and then you figure out the ninth. I mean, you know, you you it, there there are just a lot of different things you got to do, and you know the and and these guys have to face three hitters. You yep. Know? So that's. That's part of the problem. The only way too. they don't I mean, is if they come in for the last out of an inning, and then you're allowed to start right, a new right, inning right, with somebody. Right. But um, it's uh, that you know you might have to go. On, uh, Bruce Bochy likes having a closer. He does likes having a guy, but um, and it if, is if you have to if you have to use him for use him for four outs. You know, if, have him get get the eighth and get the first out of the the ninth. Clean bases, bring somebody in to get two outs. I, I don't know. There there are, there are ways to do it and. And they may have to get non uh, what non conventional here in in the meantime. But and then again, and I've said this so I, I I believe this to no end. People like Leclerc and and Jonathan Hernandez they can write the ship. There is sure. a point where they can just all of a sudden figure okay, start looking at film and seeing it and going yeah. I'm pulling on this side or I'm tipping here or whatever I'm doing. Yeah. More than anything, get ahead and throw a damn strike to start the end. I mean, nah. start them off with a strike. It's better when you start ahead. I'm sure. just it's just the way it is. Yeah, no, you're right, and uh, um, and don't give the hitters too much credit. You know, that's another thing. I yes, mean, you, you 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 look at you look at the best hitters in baseball history, and they all got out like 65 percent of the time. Absolutely, the pitcher is always going to have the advantage. And Absolutely, in this day and age, when batting averages are way down. It's it's even more more drastic now. I mean, you're going to run into hot hitters. I mean, Acuna could have hit anything, you know, right? But <laughs> yeah. but um, you you still you still need to um have you know have confidence yep. and and know and, the math is on your side. Well, and let, you know before we get out of here on the big league stuff, let's 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 give kudos and let's talk about Cody Bradford. He had a rough start. Yeah. Um, he was so gracious after the game for what happened, and boy, stood up to it and said, "Look, when you when you throw a ball over the middle of the plate, when you miss over the middle of the plate, big league players take advantage of that, sure. and that's the that is the and but and but he gave credit to Acuna on I made the pitch I wanted. Yeah, Acuna hit the ball 450 feet off me, but that's where I wanted the ball, and he went down and got it. Yeah. And you know what he said on that one, I tipped the hat. On the other ones." When I'm, you know, basically he said, when I'm serving batting practice, yeah. that'll happen. He goes, that's not the way I went. He stood up, faced us. He wasn't dejected. I still think this guy's serviceable. I think he's a back end of the rotation guy for somebody, whether it's here or somewhere. Yeah. You see what he's done in AAA. He had some some big uh, exit velocity off of him. But he is a uh, homegrown talent who came up here and was put in a very bad set. This is a team that kills left-handers. Yeah. And he does not throw 96, 97 miles an right. hour. He's in the low 90s. In fact, I saw a a lot of fastballs we were up in, in the, the 80s, press yeah. box 89 88 you know sure. in there so when you do that he said he sat down with martin that was wonderful what he said about martin he, and martin goes look when we don't throw as hard as everybody else you've got to hit your corners you got to hit yeah. your spots you got to put it where it's not right over the middle um I, I'm, I'm pulling for cody sure i'm pulling for him what a sweet kid and that was great for his family and all of that and i hope we get him back up here i still feel he can come up here and contribute in spot starts this year and, and well, serviceable somewhere. I mean, there are there are scenarios where he could be in the bullpen. Sure. You know? I mean, he couldn't he couldn't do it this time because he threw strikes to them. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't afraid. No. But, but he, you know, th- this time he, the Rangers couldn't afford to keep him around for three days Absolutely. to recover from his start. They had to get an arm up, so that's why he went down so quickly. Um, but there, you know, there are scenarios they can they can say, all right, we need to call him up to be in the bullpen 
and he knows it. I mean, he would pitch multiple innings. I, you know, and, and another solution. I mean, Cole, that that game that game, Cole Reagans came in and he gave up four runs, but he had like the ten hardest pitches thrown in the game. You know, I mean, yeah. Do you do you now try to leverage his velocity, uh, late in innings, uh, late in games rather? Uh, I don't know, but to your point on, on Cody Bradford, he was a professional. Yeah. Um, he he was not intimidated. You know, he he gave up that, um, you know. Big home run to Acuna and Acuna's second at bat came back and struck him out looking. You yeah, know, and and he 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 didn't shy away. There was a lot of hard contact, but he kept doing what he does. And and you know these, he helped the team. And these guys can't reinvent themselves. No, you know, and and because of his spot start, <clears throat> Dane Dunney got an extra day. Nathan Valdi got an extra day. Now if the off day, Perez, Gray, Heaney, they're they're now working on two extra days rest. So. And, and, and I, I wrote this this morning in the uh, newsletter. You know, Martin Perez had to pitch in the World Baseball. He didn't have to. He chose to pitch in the right. World Baseball Classic. They started earlier. Those games were intense. And I know I know he didn't get out of the first inning of his last start in, in that round. But he went through the work. He traveled. He didn't have a traditional spring. He, he might, you know, if you just look at his last two starts, very un-Martin-like, um, he might have hit a, a little bit of dead arm, yeah, a little fatigue here. So the rest might actually uh, really benefit him. So we'll we'll find out um, soon. By the time this hits the the hits the the, the YouTube channel, yeah, he um, goes tonight. We'll, we'll we'll know the answer to that. But yeah. uh, oh, by the way, it's Friday for those who don't Friday know. the nineteenth. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, we yeah you know, we can't just talk all about pitching. Corey Seager is back. His first game was Wednesday. Uh, I thought he was okay. Uh, he hit that ball real hard to turn into a second great, fly. That was a great play by Michael Harris. Yeah, what a great um, Michael Harris play. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a good team. It's 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 a good team. You know, think of this lineup where it's about to be. Now, now think about this. You you got Corey Sear back at shortstop. That's obviously going to push the hottest hitter, one of the hottest hitters on the team. Duran is probably going to move out to left field. You've also got. Uh, Garver coming back. Yeah, think of that lineup with Garverheim. You've got that, that is a that is a pretty stout lineup all the way down to eight or nine. Yeah, which and there no there are no giveaways down there. But what I'm saying is that's what good teams have. They have a spot in that every time you face someone, there's a chance that you could get in trouble if you make a mistake. And well, and and and, and right now, um, uh, Leo Leo Tavares is, is hitting the ball. Yeah. Been very very good. I yeah, mean, if you look at his numbers with, with the steals and everything, he. you know, Little power wouldn't be bad, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt anybody. But he's he's a he's a darn productive player, and um, you know it, it it's good to see because he's he's doing it from both sides of the plate. His defense is always going to be very, always going to be there. So um, I think I think that um, I don't want to I don't want to say he's he has become a fixture in center field, but he's on his way to being the the, the guy, and and it's good to see he's. He's athletic. He's long. He's lean. Uh, such a nice, nice guy. Um, and and really, he should have never made his debut in twenty twenty. No. You know, it was, a, it was that goofy COVID year, and um, it it shouldn't have happened. He shouldn't have made his debut until at least twenty twenty one. You know, yeah. and honestly, he probably shouldn't have been on the opening day roster in twenty one, but he was. Um, but th- this guy, this guy can this guy can play. He's been in the minors the last couple of years. He's gotten at bats. Uh, he, he's gotten reps, and I think it, it looks like it's clicking. It yeah. looks like it's clicking. Now, they all go through the slumps. I would still rate him as a young player who's susceptible to, to slumps. But um, I that that you know when you brought up the eight nine hitters, it's hard it's hard to not mention that Tavares is in a, a really good spot, and that's helping the offense out a lot. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, listen, the Frisco Rough Riders are sponsoring this next segment. Uh, we're going to have Aaron Zavala join us, brought by the Frisco Rough Riders right after this. This week's guest segment, as has been the case all season and will be the case for the rest of the season, is brought to you by the Frisco Rough Riders, who are in town uh, to finish out the, the weekend of the 19th, 20th, and 21st. They're playing Amarillo. Then they're going to go out of town. They're going to go up to Arkansas for a week and then come back May 30th for a home stand against San Antonio. Uh, as always, Thursday... Thirsty Thursday. We were out there last time. We did not partake in the thirst quenching, however. We're professionals, folks. Uh, Friday, 
June 2nd, fireworks. Saturday, June 3rd, kids run the bases. And then the 4th, the Sunday the 4th, that is the case with every Sunday. Bam! It's, it's post-game fireworks this week and kids Sunday fun day. So, make your way out to Riders Field. It's fun, it's cheap, and you will have a good time and see good baseball. Guys, and joining us right now from out near Rough Rider Field there in Frisco, it's Frisco Rough Riders outfielder, Texas Ranger prospect, Aaron Zavala, who is back now and playing and hit a home run last night. Aaron, what's going on, buddy? Hey, guys. How you doing? What happened to the mustache? <laughs> I had to have a change of pace coming into this season. <laughs> okay. It was a pretty good one. I think you could have impressed him. We'll see. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a late summer comeback. All right, all right. Change up the mojo a little bit. <laughs> so you've been, you've been, uh, you went from a dead period, kind of in one place, and all of a sudden you had to move to another place. Um, mm-hmm. But how does it feel to be back on a? Oh, uh, it's great just just being back with um, a lot of the guys I played with last year. A lot of good friends. Um, great atmosphere out here. Um, you know, can't can't really beat it. Okay, so how are you feeling? How, how's how's the elbow? How's yeah? How's that? Let's start with the elbow. Good. I mean, everything everything's been good. Um, the rehab went well. Uh, arms feeling up to par. You know, it's bouncing back well day to day. So it's not no no complications or anything. Just just playing ball now. Now are are, are you um, at full strength throwing wise? Do you still need to do some build up? How would you uh, rate the status there? Um, so in terms of my actual arm, um, yes, full go and everything, but, um, getting back out here, I'll still be on like a game progression for the first couple of weeks, just to not push it, play it safe, you know, no need to re-aggravate it this early in the season. Um, but once that's all, that's all over with, then it's, it's full go. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of a bummer of a deal. You're in the fall league. It's kind of like a reward, uh, for, for good play and a chance to be kind of showcase, and then you get hurt out there. <laughs> how did you? How did you deal with that? Now, what happened? Yeah, that was, did, you, did you feel something? I mean, tell us what happened there. No, so I was I was taking infield outfield, and then after I finished throwing from the outfield, uh, forearm kind of kind of tightened up, and I thought it was just like a forearm cramp, forearm tightness, whatever, um, you know. And then kind of just rested it for about a week or so. Didn't see any progress. And that's kind of when the whole image, imaging um, stuff came about. Got an MRI, um, saw the tear in it, and then a couple of days later, um, I was here out in, in uh, Arlington seeing uh, Doctor Meister. Yeah, now you didn't have the full blown Tommy John. You had what do they call no. it? A brace surgery now. Yes, it's only a brace yes. procedure. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. You know, med- medicine oh, it never ceases to amaze me. Um, <laughs> That's because we're idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, uh, that's true. But do, do you even give it a second thought now when you're throwing a ball? No. I mean, sometimes, uh, like, rolling out of bed some days, it'll be more stiff if I sleep on it wrong or something. Yeah, That's about the, the only time that I notice it, though. Yeah, just wait till you get older, Aaron. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I talked to, you know, a reporter, so I talked to guys, and they the, the, the Rangers are really impressed with the way you attacked – uh, your rehab, I mean, even at, even when you weren't able to do much, what were your goals going into this? Cause they, they think that you're bigger, um, uh, hitting the ball farther, you know, obviously a stronger guy. What, what were your goals going into it? Um, honestly, it was just kind of taking it a, a day at a time. That was a big thing that I had throughout my rehab, um, especially not being able to do baseball activity, just finding other ways to just get better each and every day, you know? Um, so, I mean, flexibility, um, things like that, just figuring out better ways to move, um, diet, um, weight room stuff, just kind of all those things that, um, help out baseball players, uh, on the field without actually being on the field. Are, do you notice that you're stronger is, or is there a way to measure it? Like, I, I don't um, I mean, I, I think so. I mean, like, okay. uh, like the the number the numbers that 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 they test for have all improved. So, okay. So, like, you're not like you didn't like 
jump a hundred pounds in your bench press. I'm, 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 I don't even know if you got bench <laughs> no, press. No, no, <laughs> but no, <laughs> heavy bench presses were not in my workout regime. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. I couldn't. I couldn't tell you the last time I bench pressed. Yeah. John, you no. No, it's been. I'm, I graduated high school when the last time I did it. And that was 1986. Aaron wasn't even. Aaron's dad was probably running around where I was. I mean, he wasn't probably a teenager. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. So, so you've you've come back. I mean, uh, it's, it, you're playing your third game tonight. You're batting 500. Do you think you can keep up that pace? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, we all can hope, right? <laughs> That's right. No, I'll but, do it until I can't. Yeah. Um, but you hit a. A home, a home run Thursday, opposite field shot. Um, it, it seems like last season you were able to kind of tap into your power a little bit more. What, uh, what, what was that? What, what did you make a, a little adjustment? What, what led to that? Um, I think a big thing was just like figuring out, uh, kind of just how to use the ground more and like leverage, leverage my swing more. Um, you know, so as, as I continue to learn that and as I'm still learning, you know, I'm hoping that, uh, things will keep trending in the right direction and everything will work out. Can, can you explain it in layman terms? <laughs> Russ Dunn. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, you, you basically the- use it. You okay. using using like my feet to basically stay in the ground to be able to create more force. Okay, that makes sense. Because last night you went oppo, right? Yeah, I did. Flipped it right out there. Just flipped it right. I mean, and it didn't just flip <laughs> right out. It it landed up on the berm over there. I mean, I saw the highlight. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. So what what homer potential do you think you have, or do you even worry about that stuff? Do you just no. I'm just I'm just playing each game. So and then at the end of the year, however it falls, it falls. Yeah, but okay. chi- but chicks dig the home run. Long ball. <laughs> long ball. Chicks okay. dig the long so they, ball. So they say. <laughs> uh, so you know, you're getting a late start to the season. And I don't, I don't know if you're the kind of guy who sets uh, indiv- you know, goals, numbers, things like that. But you feel like you can still reach your goals, even though you're probably, what, five weeks into the season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, unlike some other guys, I don't really set like goals for the year. I mean, it's kind of just. Like I said, take it one game at a time. And after what what is the minor league season? 120 games. You know, however however it falls at the end of a, those 120 games, and figure out where I how I need to move forward going into the off season. Did Did you have to learn that the one day at a time approach? Was there a point at you were looking too far ahead, and 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 maybe it caught up to you? Uh, not really. No, I've, I've kind of always been, been good about staying grounded and in the moment. Um, that's something that my dad, um, uh, tried to instill in me from a, a young age. So, um, just doing that and just taking it a day at a time is just kind of, I'm naturally at this point. Well, it seems like an easier way to do things too. Yeah. You know, you don't have to worry Take, about it. Takes a lot of the pressure off. Yeah. You just worry about what's right in front of you instead of. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I, you know, am I going to get called up? You see that with every team. I mean, baseball players do that. You got to forget what happened one day to, to get yeah. to the next. Because if you go out and sombrero it or go 0 for 4 with four strikeouts, <laughs> you're going to carry that over to the next day. You're not going to be in this league very long. Because every once in a while, you're just going to have one of those days. Yeah. 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 Me, I had them all the time, but that was a whole, that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, you, you mentioned, you know, a, a lot of the guys you ended up playing with last year, both at Hickory and, and in Frisco are, are, are still there. Um, mm-hmm. Does it just feel like you're, you know, walking into the, walking into a place you've been forever? Or is it, what, what's that like? It's gotta be a lot of good camaraderie. Yeah, no, we have a, we have a great group out here. Um, I got here. Uh, my first day was on Tuesday, walked into the clubhouse with open arms. Um, happy to see everybody, everyone that was happy to see me. So, um, just kind of, kind of having that atmosphere makes it a, a lot easier transition back into it. Yeah. We were out there last week. Right. We watched uh, Jack start on Thursday. Um, Corey was, Corey Sear was rehabbing. I guess you had, you mm-hmm. had a pretty good seat, uh, for Jack's start. What last night, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good start Wednesday last night. night. Um, yeah, I did. but a, a lot of pe- people know the names of the players, but they don't know the manager necessarily. Uh, what what is Carlos like? I mean, because we love him. 
Uh, Man, he's, he's he's the glue. He's the glue out here. He's what he's what keeps the wheels turning. Um, especially with uh, he's kind of came up with a lot of us because um, he was in down east in twenty one, Hickory in twenty two, uh, and now Frisco um, this season. So I mean, he's been he's been my manager every year, um, and I know it's the same for a lot of the guys that are out here. So a lot of the players are really comfortable with having that open line of communication with them and. Um, just making, making the atmosphere there, what, uh, what is best for us. Does he ever get, does he ever get on you guys? Yes. Um, <laughs> but he's very much respected by all of us. So when, when he speaks, we listen. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, we, we just, we, he's such, such a good guy. And like we were there and he, he was like asking us how he could help us. Like, yeah, it's like, Hey, you got, you got Zach Bingle. You got a, you got a media relations guy taking care of that. Yeah. Uh, and he's, I was like, yeah, we just need to talk to Jack. He's like, okay, well, I'll keep this meeting short. I was like, just go as long as you have to go. <laughs> we're, we're just, we're just here. Yeah. You're, we're, you're, we're good. Take care yeah. of your team. Don't take care of us. <laughs> uh, but obviously you're, you're in double a, um, do you have sites I, I, would, in, in a perfect world? I know you're one day at a time. Triple A is that where you would hope to finish this year? Major leagues? I mean, I mean, I, I don't think it's. I think it's possible. I, it's not out of the question. Yeah. You, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever they tell me, I'm going somewhere else. Well, then that's the day. Until then, I'll just keep playing out here and keep trying to put together good games and do that for as long as I can. All right. Well, we'll worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about when, when you're getting promoted or not promoted. <laughs> Absolutely. What just, is it? Just don't go the other way. How about that? Yeah, no, let's not go the other way. Yeah, yeah. injuries All are right. done now for you. Now you're just playing ball. That's that's what we're mm-hmm. going to deal with the rest of your career. So you know, but on the on the rehab thing, when when Josh Young came out of rehab last year, he was like in the best shape of his life. Are are you? Do you feel like you are stronger, better, faster, more flexible than you've been? I do. Yes, they, they do a great job out there. Um, putting together the plans for all of us to to kind of come back stronger than than we came in. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of guys out there. Yeah, you know, Otto, Spencer, Howard, Aaron's not there anymore, but Ricky was there. Ricky's uh, back though, right? Did Ricky, Manasco? He is, yes, yeah. He's, he's making he's making a start this weekend, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just uh, and well, that's a good thing. Yes, <laughs> you don't want to be there too long. And uh, hey, when you're a pitcher, it's you know. <laughs> Just the opposite things happen. As a pitcher, it was his leg and it wasn't his arm. So, I mean, that sucks, but still it was his leg. For Aaron, it was his arm, not his leg, which, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, you know, you'd rather you'd rather have your legs under you and healthy than, you know, you can get over the arm because you can still swing a bat in a lot of situations. But that was crazy yeah. for both of you, but it's good, good to be back. Yeah, so. For sure. Uh, okay, uh, you may remember from last time I asked the, the, the baseball stuff and then John comes in with the uh, – the hard hitting stuff. Uh, the the real <laughs> real tough questions. So you know, hand it over to him. Yeah. So you know, you in, in the last few months, you've had a lot of spare time. So this might answer that. But what do you do in your spare time? I mean, besides baseball, is there anything you like to do? You like to go golf, fish, hunt? Uh, I don't know if golfing's on the table much for me anymore. But uh, <laughs> recently, I've been watching just kind of. Like watching shows, movies, um, just hanging out with friends, normal stuff, just relaxing, taking my downtime where I can get it. We watched uh, we watched that Air movie about about Nike and that Michael was good. Ford. That was good. Do you see that? Was it? I have not seen it yet. No. Well, yeah, I mean, you should. You went to Oregon. I mean, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's right there. Hey, it's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> it's pretty good. I don't, I don't know if you ever met Phil Knight, but. Uh, um, and what, what the actor, not Matt Damon, but the other one. Yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> Matt Damon's other guy. Um, uh, well, if you hadn't asked me, I could have just spit it right out. Ben Affleck. There you go. He was hilarious. He was Phil. He, he's Phil Knight in the movie, and he's hysterical. I know. I, I think I think Phil Phil might be a little weird. <laughs> but <laughs> did you know. ever meet Phil? Uh, I've shook his hand one time. Yeah, I was going to say he popped on that campus every once in a while because he's a former. Oregon Duck too, isn't he? He is, yes. Yeah. He, all right. He's the reason they have all the uniforms and, and all that stuff. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna get into some 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 of your players 
that you've been playing with. I've, I've asked a lot of these guys this, and I want to see if you're on par with everybody else. Hey, who's the best dressed guy that you've been playing with the last couple of years? Who's best dressed? Mm. I was. Uh, might have to hand it to Jax Biggers. Oh, he's really? got Biggers. good style. He's, that's first. Yeah, Biggers one. has got good style. All right, that's the first Biggers. I think who have we been getting? Uh, I think we got a John Ornelas. Yeah, Ornelas seems to be. Oh, you know, he's yeah, up. yeah. Ornelas can, is up there. Now, this is one of my favorite because I'm kind of a, a uh, in my I'm a big humor fan. So who's the funniest guy? Who keeps everybody lighthearted and cracking up? Ooh. Honestly, Owen might be up there, but he, his sense of humor matches mine. It's a little bit drier. So, <laughs> is there a prankster on the team? Not that's coming to mind. Okay. You know, nobody pranks like that. You see, you hear all these stories about you guys. Have you seen a prank or anything happen since you've been a professional ball player? No, not not anything notable. Not Man. anything that's that's uh, ringing a bell. All right, we're gonna have to get on these guys. They're, they're, you gotta. Well, they gotta learn them. Yeah, they got to learn the pranks. That's true. They're, they grew up in a different time, man. We used to mess with our friends all the time. I mean, there's, that's <laughs> part of the best part of your, your buddies is doing that. Okay, this is another fun one, too. Let's say that you got caught in a back alley and you're about to brawl with a group of dudes. Who do you want with you? Who's the one guy, your teammate, that you'd say, like, I'll be all right as long as he's standing next to me? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, Owen White again. Or that's White. A, now, that's been a popular <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, Owen might <laughs> – yeah, no, no, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. Your dad's a police officer. He is. Yes. Yeah. So has he taught you any of those tricks? Like, like, uh, kind of like control, a, uh, uh, some way to subdue somebody criminal, like without like showing the force, like bending his wrist backward or just something to like snap <laughs> yeah. him into attention. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd be all right on my own. <laughs> yeah you can hang you can hang and you're bigger and stronger now but <laughs> absolutely okay you guys are bus guys you guys take it and you fly every once in a while but i think it's mostly on bus rides what are you doing on mm -hmm. those bus rides are you watching movies dad are you reading what are you doing on those bus rides kind of a mix of however much time i got you know movies to book to to film to kind of whatever i have time for kind of get tired of one thing move to the next and then cycle them through you guys you guys stop and eat. You get bathroom breaks. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. how, how how long will you you guys go? Is there a rule? There might maybe there's a rule. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a rule, but usually, like, say we have like a five six hour bus ride, we'll stop like in two three hour mark, and then take it on home after that. Stop at Bucky's, like everybody else yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, Bucky's. <laughs> Let's see that bus pull into Bucky's. Yeah, <laughs> might as well. They're about to make some money in there. Them, so them boys can eat. We know how them baseball <laughs> players are. Hey, you know, um, this is interesting. Between between high A and double A, either one. Is there a stadium that was the away stadium that was like a favorite of yours? You're like, man, this th that was a cool place. Those fans were crazy. They were nuts. Is there any place you enjoyed playing that was an away stadium? Um, and hi, uh, I really liked Bowling Green and, um, Greenville, the, the rep, uh, uh, Fenway. Um, and then up here in double A, I really liked playing at Wichita. That was a really nice place. Yeah. Wichita and Greenville are very popular. Yeah. Well, Wichita's, I don't want to say brand new stadium, but it's pretty new. Yeah. And they built it to be yeah. like a triple A AAA park. I Some think. of the hitters like Amarillo, but it's because the ball flies. <laughs> so <laughs> you been, did you go to Amarillo last year? Yeah. I went to Amarillo once last year. Uh, did you hit any home runs? I did. Yes. <laughs> did you think, oh man, that's a, and you're like, oh, that's an out, and then and then all yep, of a sudden you're. I sure bases. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Is there any favorite place you've eaten on the road for these guys? Like, have you ever like on one of your road trips and y'all found some little hole in the wall or whatever and go, man, this was this great little restaurant that was in, you know, some little town in North Carolina or maybe in the Texas League? Is it you, you ever run into one of those? I try to keep my routines as steady as I can. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm eating out, it's probably Chipotle or something that I know is going to sit well, you know, something <laughs> that's going to do what I need it to do. So I usually don't venture out much, um, unless it's like an off day or something. All right. Couple more before I well, get what, you. What, what, yeah. What, I mean, what is your routine? Uh, I mean, like gonna, wake uh, up. You woke up, you texted me this morning at like nine 30. Yeah. So wake up at nine. Yeah, give or take. Uh, have breakfast, have a coffee, 
relax a little bit, um, kind of just take my time getting out of bed, um, do what I have to do to get ready for the day, get up and moving, and then uh, usually at the field around around this time, and then get rolling with my my stuff pregame. Do you will you eat? Will you eat at the at your apartment, or will you eat at the ballpark? Uh, I'll make breakfast at home, and then I'll have lunch at the field. Okay, and then can you? What about pregame? How do you feel your fuel yourself? Uh, most times it's something something lighter, it's easy to digest. Um, I can't eat a whole lot before games, but um, I try to make sure to get at least something in there. We we went we went and had breakfast the other morning, and I had pancake. I didn't have a big breakfast. Like usually, I'll get you know if there's like a sampler. Yeah, I'm getting the sample. Right. Well, I didn't get the <laughs> sampler. I got the two by two by two at like nine o'clock. I went and worked out at twelve thirty, and it was like I just eaten. I thought I was going to throw up. It was terrible. <laughs> I, can't, I just can't. I can't. I can't. I've never been able to do it. But I was like, oh, three hours. All right. It's it's gone. It's moved. It's but moved. It hadn't moved. <laughs> it was just sitting there like a damn brick. But you got you mean just don't work out. Just don't leave work out. it. There See, that's the situation. That's that's your problem. Hey, when you were growing <laughs> up, so you when you were growing up, who who was your favorite ball player, and what was your favorite team when you were growing up? Baseball. Uh, growing up, uh, probably go with Barry Bonds. Um, you know, uh, were you a Giants fan? I was not a Giants. I was actually a Dodgers fan, which doesn't doesn't add up. But <laughs> um, I I I just loved uh, Barry Bonds' swing. So, all right. So you're you're from you're from Oregon. So, mm-hmm. what games did you get? Did you get Mariners games? What what? Uh, I went to a handful of Mariners games when I was up in the area for like youth tournaments. Um. And then we, I had actually, I actually had a, uh, the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes were a couple minutes away from, from my home. And that was, I believe the low A for the Giants at the time. All right. Um, so I went, would, would venture out to those games every, every so often and, uh, catch some of that. Well, what about on TV? What was it? What, were you, um, were you in the Mariners territory? Oh, I didn't, I didn't watch much baseball on TV growing up. It was All right. pretty, pretty on the go. Um, with baseball and school and everything, so okay, fair enough. Anything else for you? No, nothing for me. You can. We got to have a good. We got to have a finisher, though. Yeah. Okay. You want to do a finisher? Let's see. Uh, so, your favorite player growing up? We've already done that. Who? Hey, I tell you what. Let's ask you this one. I've already asked you before about uh, what's something nobody knows about you. We did that the first time we had him out. So we got to go with with who's your hero. Is it your dad? I mean, that would be easy. Yeah, got it. Got to be my dad. Uh, biggest role model and influence on my life. So can't take that away from him. Did, did he? Did he work normal hours, or was he out at night patrolling? I don't. Uh, know. He, he's he's switched shifts multiple times throughout throughout my life. Uh, worked graveyard days, um, six to three in the afternoon. You know, it's it just kind of kind of depends on whatever whatever he can do to to make make the most events of my brother and I um, to be around as much as he can. Yeah. It's, it's, you'll find this out and, and you saw your dad do it. It is a chore. It is, it is so hard. When you have kids who are playing multiple sports. God, it is tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And I mean, like, you know, tomorrow, I can imagine. My, yeah. my daughter has, Two volleyball games at the same time. My son has two baseball games, so y'all got to split. We're splitting up, <laughs> yeah. dividing and conquering. <laughs> but I may be able to go. catch the 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 late baseball game. But man, it is it is just crazy. But but yeah, I mean, hats off to parents. All because, parents. Uh, my parents too. I did the same thing. My kids are now at least big enough where they're, they can they're drive. where they're driving on their own now. They get where oh, they need nice. to go. That started yeah. last week. Aaron, this has been great. Hey, more than anything, in all seriousness, Jeff and I are so proud you're back, man. We're glad for you. you. We're happy you're healthy. Going to get out to the ball field. We we get out there. We try to get out there every every home stand and get out there. For sure, you're going to see us. We're going to come Sounds out there good. and give you give you some crap. Anything else? I don't, I don't know if I want to give him any crap. He said he'd be okay in the back room, out in the back, in the back alley. He'd be fine. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not trash talking and run. Of course, he can outrun me too. So that'll be. <laughs> You're not getting very far. <laughs> Shit. All right, Aaron. That's Aaron Zavala, outfielder for the Frisco Rough Riders. This was brought to you by the Frisco Rough Riders. Aaron, thanks a lot, buddy. We'll see you at the yard. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, man. All right, take care.
that was Aaron Zavala joining us on the Frisco Rough Rider Hotline. Frisco Rough Riders who are, who are sponsoring that segment, thanks to them. Uh, now we've got to go down in the bus leagues. Another segment, by the way, that is for sale. If you uh, want us, we, 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 we've sold it for the, for June and July. We oh. just can't announce it yet. Oh, we can't announce it, but we've yeah. got June and July down in the bus leagues uh, sold. Great. Okay. See, I'm on the ball here. I know what's going on. <laughs> but we got to go down in the bus leagues. Let's talk about the teams. First of all, let's go to Down East. Down East is 19 and 15. That's low A for you that don't know. They're 19 and 15, five and five in their last ten. They've lost a couple of games. Um, I mean, I guess the only guy really hitting well there is Albie Ortiz. Ortiz is that yeah name? Abby Ortiz he uh, he was a college selection but he's a he he is an international player he was he was uh, selected in the draft a couple of years ago so he should be doing what he's doing uh, he's, he he's older? older he's more advanced he's okay. got power uh, for first base so um, not a position where um, the Rangers have a lot of depth so uh, that's a good thing I guess you know for him but he he is producing. Uh, but he should be, you know, he's, he's older than these guys yeah. and, uh, but he's, he's doing a good job. Uh, uh, Cam Colley has come on, uh, a little bit here. He's, he's, you know, his average is up to in the two forties, which doesn't sound like much, but it was in the one thirties. So yep. that's, that's good. Uh, the it, pitching's still doing well. Same guys, uh, Porter, uh, Montalvo, Curry, um, some, some good stuff, uh, on the mound there. So I think, um, Gutierrez is there too at, yeah. at the plate, and he's done, yeah. he's done. Yeah, good. he's doing fine. He's really young though. Yeah, he's eighteen. He needs a, a couple of those eighteen-year-olds. Cueva, I think Cueva's a little older. Uh, Figueroa, right? Um, he's his average is is under two hundred as we sit here today, but it's up from probably forty points. He was really scuffling there to start the start the season. And, but they're very very young. Very young. Very yes. young. And you're going to get that. Yep. All right, let's go to Hickory. Hickory's twelve and twenty-two. A um, lot of bad things happen at Hickory. They're zero and they're zero and ten in their last ten. They've lost eleven in a row. And the one guy everybody was going out there to probably see, uh, just because they wanted to see him, is no longer with them and probably not going to be throwing a baseball for at least eighteen months. Well, the Rangers think that Kumar Rocker will be back in the second half of next season after having Tom and John surgery. Uh, it was expected to be this week, so late this week. This was on. Tuesday, they said later this week. So today's Friday, so Friday it's probably done. could have been yesterday, Thursday on the we'll off know when day. We get to the ball field. We're gonna know. Yeah, they'll let us know. But um, he, uh, yeah, he just felt something. Felt something. It wasn't like a a lingering thing or something he'd been trying to pitch through. It was a you know some some of these Tommy Johns it just snaps. I mean, we listened to what Aaron Zavala said. Yeah, and and, and described his. He thought it was just forearm tightness. I think yeah. I think Kamar knew something was wrong as soon as it happened and. Uh, this you know. had nothing to do with any of his draft yeah, medical yeah, stuff. You know, that was all shoulder. I, 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 you know, first of all, the, the Mets never came out and said, and and probably rightfully so, why he why he failed the test. But then you had you know a lot of outlets quoting sources saying it was the whole arm. They were concerned about the shoulder and the elbow. Well, after you know the the big deal, the big revelation in June last year was that he had had so, uh, su- surgery. Micro exploratory microscopic surgery on his shoulder. The Rangers say that that when they put him through their physical exam, all the imaging on the on the elbow was clean. Right. You know, and there are people like, oh well, if you have a shoulder problem, then you know that leads to an elbow problem, and uh, you know, wh- whatever. It, the guy got hurt. That's yep. that's all there is to it. The Rangers don't look at it as, God dang, I can't believe we drafted this guy. What were we thinking? Right. They're like, this is just one of those baseball things. So. Right. Um, He's going to be out. It's a shame because he was doing so well. Right. One thing that Chris Young said was, the, you know, if there's a silver lining here, we saw what Kumar Rocker is. Yeah, he was good. Ta- and how talented he is. He should have been in double A. Now, I mean, he was almost on his way to double A. Yeah. That's how well he was doing yeah, that. He, he, yeah, I think a promotion was was imminent for him probably uh, the beginning of June or middle of June. But that's not going to happen now. So, um, you know, you just hope for the best. It sucks. Um well, but they still have Josh Steven, who is that's right. Who is it's not Stefan, yeah, it's Steven, yeah, yeah. It looks like Stefan, yeah. But Local anyway, kid, yeah, right? South South Grand Prairie High School, two point uh, five nine ERA. Yeah, I think he was born in Desoto, um, but that's anyway, right over here. Yeah, there you go. So, but uh, yeah, he's he's pitching well. Um, you know, Mitch Bratt's doing okay. You know, you know that Max Acosta's doing okay. When you kind of look at their last ten, or really at this whole losing streak, they've gotten. 
they've gotten their butts kicked twice. Um, they, I think they've lost five one run games and then two or three more by two runs. So it's not like they're out there scuffling. I mean, it's not like a junior so, varsity. So they may have a uh, yeah, they may have a bullpen problem, or they just they they, <laughs> they have problems and one shows up each night when you know, yeah and, and costs them the game. But um, there there's still some talent on that team and and they're going to be getting Dane Acker back soon, which yeah. which will which will definitely help. Um, he's he's about to finish up out in Arizona. Hatcher's so. hit six home runs. He's leading the team. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. playing first base for him. Uh, but you know, Acosta all around has been pretty well. He's got a, four home runs. He, he's still young too. He's yeah. hitting two sixty four. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know his his whole game is 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 come out. Was he twenty one now? Or well, you know the the guys who've been in the system for a while, like Max. Um, you gotta you always have to factor in the the uh, COVID. Yeah, because you know, they all lost a year, and 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 um, you know he's going to be. I think he's going to be uh, Rule Five eligible after this season, which which is interesting because he didn't play in nineteen, didn't play in twenty, was hurt in twenty one, and was coming off twenty two where he was recovering from surgery in the off season. So he he's he's going to be an interesting Rule Five case. Yeah, um, that one that will be interesting. I, I think he probably. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to think, but anyway, <laughs> we, we, let's don't jump that far ahead. I, we still yeah. got a trade deadline to happen, uh, but, but he's a guy. Some of these guys may he's, not be here when this trade. Well, deadline and happens. he's he becomes a trade candidate because because he is a Rule Five guy. Yeah. So okay, we go to Frisco. They're sixteen and nineteen, three and seven in their last ten. They're they're actually besides Down East, the only one that's <sighs> won a few in the last ten games. They've won three in a row actually. Uh, and let me tell you something: somebody has started to figure things out. Jack Leiter is looking good. I mean, he scuffled it right at the end of his last start, but he had six innings of, I mean, what, one hit ball. Yeah, he's uh, he's got it. 98, 99 he was I hitting. I don't want to say he's got to figure it out, but something has changed in his mindset. And he told us that last week when we were there after his start and we talked to him. He's getting mean. We've got a, we've got a video of it uh, on, on the YouTube channel, which you sub- should subscribe to, as well as he was the Friday on the farm last week. So you should subscribe to Rangers today for five ninety nine a month or sixty dollars for the year. Um, it, it was I'd never heard him talk like that. And I've talked to I've talked to Jack a, a pretty good deal here the last two or three years, and he went from the development mindset to like I'm still trying to figure things out to to I'm trying to win. And so basically, what I think happened is he's tired of being the guy who walks a bunch of guys. And and he's tired of people saying, "Oh, I, not that he hear, heard this or said this, but you know, there are people who are concerned about him. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to suck. No, you know. And at some point, you've got to you've got to do something. And 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 when you look at at the the pitchers he's with, TK Roby is a competitor, but the number one competitor is Owen, is White. Owen White. Yeah, and and the 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 guy who we just talked about Kamar Rocker is an amazing competitor too. Yes. And Jack Leiter obviously knows that really well because they were teammates in college. Right. So maybe they talked to him, maybe he saw the way they went about it, maybe they maybe he asked them for input, whatever it is, it's changed and it's changed for the better because it's his last four starts. I know the the if you go back four or I'm sorry, if you go back um th- it's three starts. If you go back um, it might be four. Shit, I don't know. I'm losing track. But the, the Amarillo start where he went four innings and allowed allowed four or five runs, as we just talked about with Aaron, the ball flies there. Yeah. And pop-ups go out of the ballpark. And right. that happened to Jack in the first inning. But he threw a ton of strikes. And so the the Rangers are pleased that he has increased his strike rate. He, I think he's second in minor league baseball in strikeouts. I'd have to double-check that. But... He he. So he has the stuff, and now it's just kind of all getting together. He's more competitive. He's in the strike zone more, and he's learning that when he's in the strike zone and they hit the ball, a if they hit it hard, it usually goes to somebody, and b they're not going to hit it very hard. Right. So this is this is very positive. It's and it's yes. a, you know and it's it's a step that when we get to Triple A, Cole Wynn needs to take. Yes. So let's go to Triple A. Yeah, we'll go to Triple A. That's uh, oh well, well, no, we, we, we got we got more to talk about. Well, Actually, Zavala's back. And Tommy said Thomas and JC is is doing really really well. Evan Carter has come back to earth. He's hitting two seventy five. He's still got four home runs. He's got eight twenty OPS. But you know he started out so hot, and now he he's not. He's still walking. Yeah, uh, doing all of that, but. 
now he's back to playing. Well, and you know, he's got that little wrist deal where he's been hit twice, once on yeah, by a pitch one time and once on was, a pickoff yeah, throw, basically up, okay. in the same area. So he's having to deal with that too a little bit. So that's, that's, that's you know, there are a lot of things that come, come into it. One of it is guys start hot and they cool off. Right. But some of it is they're playing through stuff, and, and it, sometimes it just doesn't work. But he's out there, it's, he's posting, he's healthy, and it'll get better. Absolutely. All right. We've also and so JC, like we said, he's yeah, really yeah, yeah. come on. He's really hitting good. better. And and Zavala's back in his second back. What we talked about, he hit his home run. He's hitting five hundred right now. Yep. Which obviously we expect that he should hit five hundred the entire season. So that's the way it should end. He yeah. should be still yeah. hovering around five hundred. Um, when you talk about uh, Hickory and how bad Hickory has done lately, um, you know it, it, this tells you how good of a start AAA had. There's 21 and 20 overall, but they have lost 10 in a row. Yeah, uh, they're and scuttling they've been their butts kicked. Yeah, they're 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 scuttling right now at all. Their best pitcher went to the major leagues and didn't make his last start. Yeah, but he's back. Right. Uh, the only guy there that's Pretty positive you can stay with, although his, his average has gone down a little bit lately. But Foscue's kind of been the best all-around hitter on the team. Yeah, he he, he has been, and, and he's playing some first base. Um, I guess Anderson's been pretty well in the bullpen. I mean, he had Brain a- Anderson's been good. You know, uh, they, they lost some uh, – well, they lost Leon and Latrell, kind of veteran guys from the bullpen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you, you look at their, their starting pitching, and you see Colwyn, who has an ERA above nine right now after eight starts – uh, he's walked 30 in 34 innings, which isn't very good. Obviously, he's given up eight home runs. Um, 9.17 ERA. Is yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's pretty interesting because, you know, the last time I I asked around about him, they thought he was about to turn the corner. Um, and he, it looks like he's gone the other way or there's a train that's that's blocking his progress or something because he's just not able to – well, it, it, but he but, may need he may need a deal with they did with Holiday. Remember Holiday when uh what's his name? Uh, Roy Holiday. Roy Holiday when he started out and and got all the way up to triple A, maybe even made a spot he, start. He, he got to the majors, yeah. And they he, they put him all the way back down in single A. Yeah. And he just started back up the path again and became the pitcher that he was. This kid may, maybe needs to go dominate some nineteen and twenty year olds. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what what, what they're gonna do with that Look, one. Look, he's got And the again, stuff. and again, we're not seeing the games. Right. We're not seeing, oh God, that ball should not have been that should have been a double play and it wasn't a double play that right. the ball should have been caught and it wasn't caught um you know it's the automatic ball strikes in triple a so uh maybe maybe he's just missing the pitches that the major league umpires or that are a human umpire would call a strike so we don't know entirely what's going on but we can look at the numbers and say that even if all the bad things are going against him he probably still shouldn't have a 9 era yeah. so um i don't know um, I, I really don't. You know, you, he's a former first rounder. He's on the forty man roster. Um, look until Glenn Otto and Spencer Howard get back, um, and and they're on their way back. And and maybe Glenn Otto is makes you know pitches in the major leagues soon. He could be a bullpen. He solution. could be a bullpen piece. Um, Spencer Howard too. He throws <laughs> when Spencer Howard's on. He's got some yeah good major league stuff. But right now the, the Rangers don't have a ton of starting depth. Uh, because so they need some rotation, uh, but yeah. but Cole but Cole Wynn was supposed to be part of that depth, and obviously they're not going to bring him up if he has a ninety. Right? No, no, he's not coming up right now. Yeah, so yeah, so it hasn't been a good good two weeks in the minor leagues if you're into wins and losses, and really, you know, there has there hasn't been a ton of great great unbelievable individual things, and then you had the rocker injury, and it's been two pretty bleak weeks. Yeah, it's been bad. Yeah, but it's a long season. It is a long season. This is. Uh, are we are we making our announcement today? Or? Oh yeah, we can do that. We can make our announcement today. Um, you you know what? We're uh-huh. going to make the announcement from the field. We'll get to the field and go live and say something tonight. And well, whatever. I mean, yeah. Yeah, shit, I don't care. <laughs> Let's just do it now. Let's do it now, guys. We've been talking about this. We've been teasing this. This has been happening for a while because we've had some paperwork to get signed. We've had yeah. contracts to go over. Yeah. Um, we're, we're considered talent now, I guess. I didn't realize that was a thing. Pretty startling. Yeah. Pretty startling whatsoever. But uh, we'll go ahead and get this out there. We'll Maybe we'll say something about it tonight, too. But we are now part of the Dub Network. That's right. We That's have right. joined, uh, let's see, Kevin Minch, uh, Harper, uh, 
from the Eric from Arbor. the Mavericks, Ludwig from the uh, Frank Ludwig. What is it? Uh, Suds with Luds, uh, yeah. the Mom Game Pod. <laughs> Everybody knows Emily and and uh, and Julie on that. We are. They've got a show of Nate Newton too, right? Nate so. Newton's doing something with the Cowboys, and we are joining that. And the the Rangers Today Baseball podcast is now a part of the Dub Network. Yeah, uh, the audio version will go through iHeartRadio and and the Dub Network. We've we've signed our deals. It's official, and we're excited to be on board. This was part of the reason. Uh, with Roxo that we thought about this, there was an opportunity that came up. Roxo was great to us. We love that studio over there, but sure. um, there's some good opportunities here. Yeah, I mean, you know, the you know, sp- we we've been distributing through uh, Spotify. Um, Spotify is not offering a sales team. No, and uh, you're you're you can sell stuff, but I can't sell shit. So uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be great to have that uh, backing. Uh, as as well as uh, you know, the the, sa- the savvy business instincts of Emily Jones, who yeah. who really is a, she's she's not just a, a, a field reporter guy. She's got yeah, she does. She's got a lot of irons and a lot of fires, and um, this is just one of them. And we're, we're pretty flattered that that they <clears throat> that she asked us if if, if we. Uh, wanted to join up and of course we did so yeah. uh it, it's great and it and, took a while this was a this yeah. was a match we thought we've been thinking for a couple months this is a good match and they've wanted yeah. us we wanted them yeah. we really thought this was something to do but logistics wise there's lawyers that get involved people had to write this stuff up and you know that whole thing but it was not uh, our lawyers we don't have any lawyers no no we don't have any lawyers but they <laughs> they have to draw up a little contract and do all of that uh you know uh, i deal in the contract world a lot yeah well, uh but you the, looked it over so yeah. if, you, if you said it was fine it was fine <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, you know, the the only thing that that really we were worried about, um, and by we I mean my wife, um, is that we, you know if if for some reason this falls apart, we retain ownership of Rangers today, absolutely, podcast and and we still own it. Yeah, and and I don't I don't foresee I don't see why this wouldn't work out unless no. they, they pull the plug. But uh, it looks like they're really they're really committed to giving this a chance with iHeartRadio and. Um, and we're still going to sell our own. Yeah, we're yeah, going to we sell, sell our own. Stuff, we can sell so. our own stuff, and and they're, they're a part of that too. We're going to compensate them a little bit for that, yeah. because they're going to compensate us with a sales team on the audio version. Yeah, and that, you know what? That that when that's the way good trades happen. Sure. When both teams get successful deals out of the trade, yeah. it, it's considered a good trade. Yeah, yeah, I and that it, happens sometimes. I think and, this will work out for everybody. Absolutely. Big thanks to the Dub Network for taking us on. Big yeah. thanks to the Frisco Rough Riders for sponsoring what they're doing right now for us. Got a big announcement coming up for Down in the Bus Leagues. That's going to be coming up in June and July, and we'll get yep. that going. Yep. Um, let's end this one. Guys, we're going to be at the ballpark tonight. When you're hearing this, it's probably already over with. I'm, I don't know. We might get audio version out today, but we'll see. Otherwise, right. guys, until next time, we'll see you at the yard.